So you want to get into University of Maryland College Park. I want to help you do it. My name is Craig Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about me and how I can support you throughout the entire college application process. This video is for first-year applicants seeking admission to Maryland College Park right outside of D.C. College Park is a little uh, urban hub in and of itself. But again, it's a hop, skip, and a jump away from all the excitement in Washington, but there's a lot to do in terms of extracurricular activities and sports to watch and people to meet on the University of Maryland College Park campus, campus itself, so much so that many students don't go off campus nearly as much as you would expect, considering how close the institution is to Washington, D.C. Tip number one. If you are serious about wanting to get into University of Maryland College Park, whether you're a ninth grader or a rising 12th grader, you should certainly read my classic article, How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically. It is linked below this video. That article is over at admissions.blog. Again, the link is below this video. There is no question that University of Maryland College Park is not an Ivy League school. So you may be wondering, why am I suggesting that you read this article about how to get into an Ivy League school ethically? Well, if you can follow all of the advice in that article, you will be able to catapult your way into University of Maryland College Park, no problem. It is a school that you are going to be able to consider, frankly, a safety or a possible if you uh, do everything in that article. So again, whether you're young, whether you're just starting 12th grade or somewhere in between, you should certainly read that article so that you understand the building blocks of what it takes to be the most competitive and compelling applicant possible to University of Maryland College Park. Now, I will just state that Maryland College Park is one of the handful of schools that in the event you do choose to apply and want to submit your SAT or ACT scores, even in a test optional environment, you choose to do that. You do not get to do that with still just submitting your scores via the application. What I mean by that is do not just say, yes, I, I want to submit my scores and then think that by reporting your scores on the testing page of the common application, that will be enough. Once you say, yes, I want to share my scores and I want them to be considered for my admissions decision at University of Maryland College Park, you must have your official score report sent from the testing agency that you are submitting the scores from. So if you're submitting your ACT scores, have them sent from ACT. If you're submitting your SAT scores, have them sent from the College Board. To not have that done, to not have the official score sent, will mean your application will be considered incomplete. So again, if you want to send your scores, by all means do so if you feel like they're going to be a net positive for your application. I would argue that a net positive for your application right now in the current test optional environment would be a 1400 or higher for sure. If you're in the 1300s, it's definitely more iffy. It depends on a lot of other factors that I would want to look over with a fine tooth comb on myself. But definitely if you're over 1400, you can have confidence that submitting your SAT or ACT scores would be a net positive for your application. Uh, so uh, if you do that, make sure to have the official score report sent by the application deadline. Otherwise, your application will be considered incomplete. Tip number two, when you apply to University of Maryland is very, very important. You must apply, in my opinion, by the early action deadline. Do not leisurely enter your senior year and just get around to applying to Maryland on November 29th or December 18th. That is the foolish thing you could do, the most foolish thing you could do, because University of Maryland College Park fills up at least 70%, if not more, depending on the year, of its first year class by its early application deadline. Meaning once they send out their admissions decisions for their early action cohort, which come out in late January, early February, 70% of the class at University of Maryland is spoken for. So you are really skating on thin ice if you choose to apply a regular decision. The expectations of what your application must look like and should provide to Maryland are going to be quite a bit higher if you apply regular than if you apply early action. So make sure that you get in on that priority deadline. They actually used to call that deadline the priority deadline at University of Maryland because, as you may guess, students are given priority if they apply by early action. So it's sort of written in the old way that they... Uh, marketed it. They don't market it like that anymore, but it, it's still in some places on the website says this is the priority deadline. So take them at their word. Early action students 
get priority over regular decision students at University of Maryland College Park. Tip number three, University of Maryland is a special public university in the sense that it allows you as an applicant to provide more depth about your extracurricular activities than is possible to do on the activities page of the common application. University of Maryland College Park allows you to upload a resume to its supplement on the common application. Do this. Yes, it's optional, but not for you because you're watching this video and you really want to get into University of Maryland College Park. So whether you have one activity or eight activities, you want to make sure that you can elaborate on the depth and breadth of what you achieved in those activities on a full-fledged extracurricular resume in order to learn how to put together a beautiful and I would argue an extraordinary extracurricular resume. I encourage you to click on the link below this video to my How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume short course. This course is less than an hour in length and it's incredibly cheap. You can either rent it or buy it and it's going to help you Put together an extracurricular resume that differentiates your extracurricular commitments in such a way to make your application that much more attractive to University of Maryland College Park. That will also be useful if you apply to any other colleges that allow you to upload a resume, or even if they don't, uh, there are other ways in which you can infuse that information into the um, applications of other colleges. What I will also say as sort of just a little asterisk statement for University of Maryland College Park is that the application readers over there don't necessarily want you to go on forever. And so what I mean by that is you really want to focus both on the activities page of your common application, but also on the resume that you upload on trying to bundle what it is you are communicating about into eight distinct entries. Don't have 18 entries. Don't even have 13 entries. If you can try to subsume or sort of uh, um, combine activities down into eight, University of Maryland really would prefer to read only eight entries on your resume, both on the activities section of the common application, but also on the uh, upload, uploaded resume that you share on the University of Maryland supplement. So let's say you've done four community service activities related to feeding hungry children. Uh, I would put that all into one entry and call it sort of, you know, feeding hungry children or, you know, name it something. But let's say they were four distinct organizations you worked for, don't have them be four different entries, put them onto one entry, and then you can describe in the description section of that entry, you know, all the four places you work feeding hungry children. Similarly, if you've been on a travel uh, baseball team, you've been on a school baseball team, both the varsity and the JV, you know, you've been on five different baseball teams over the course of your high school career, do not list them as five different distinct entries. Instead, put them into one entry for baseball. And within the description, of course, you can say that you were shortstop or you were third base or whatever position you played. But within the description, you can you can say it was for this travel league, this varsity team, this junior varsity team, this uh, winter league, whatever it might be, um, so that you don't overwhelm the uh, admissions officers at University of Maryland with too many entries. So that's the one sort of caveat I would get, give to putting together a really awesome resume for University of Maryland, University of Maryland College Park. Again, that how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume short course otherwise is going to give you all the information you need in order to really make a beautiful and extraordinary resume with you as the star. And my next tip focuses on the supplement to the University of Maryland a little bit more as it relates to their very, very short answer responses. Before I get to that, though, I do want to say University of Maryland College Park reads your Common App essay. I am not going to talk about best practices as it relates to your main Common Application essay if you're applying on the Common App to Maryland. What I will say is that below this video are links to my previous YouTube videos related to how to strategize about which prompt to answer on the Common App's main essay, but also some common mistakes that even very talented students make when they are completing their Common App essay. So that's another subject for another day, and you should absolutely watch each and every one of those Common App related videos, Common App essay related videos, in order to get a sense of what my thoughts are on how to make the most of that opportunity to positively differentiate your application to University of Maryland College Park. But right now I wanna talk about University of Maryland supplement to the Common App. Uh, beyond the uh, just the, the short answers, I'll talk about the short answers first. The short answers are quite humorous to me in the sense that you have 650 characters for each of them. For the first one, two, three, four, five 
you have to answer, you should literally be starting your statement as if you are finishing a sentence. Do not start a new sentence because you're, you're literally finishing a sentence for those first five statements. So for instance, uh, sentence number one, if I could travel anywhere, I would go to dot, dot, dot. Answer the question by finishing the sentence. Don't just say, if I could travel anywhere, you're that in that case, you're you're wasting five words right there. If I could travel anywhere, it was already stated, but now you're starting a new sentence. Don't do that. Just literally finish the sentence. So if I could travel anywhere, I would go to Japan because I love sushi, or uh Hungary because I love awesome European architecture, or Morocco because I really like baklava. So, you know, you have to try to finish the darn sentence, follow the instructions. You'd be surprised at how many incredibly smart students start like writing an essay in terms of their 650 character response. You don't have 650 words. You have 650 characters. That's closer to 75 to 100 words. So as a result, just finish the sentence. You can have a long sentence. I don't just end with, I like classic European architecture or I like sushi. You can say five different things about Japan that you like. Uh, but or you would like to see in person. Uh, but also, you can also try to relate it back to you and maybe, of course, you've taken about Japan or Jap Japanese history or maybe your cultural background because maybe your grandmother is from Japan, whatever it might be, you know, you can try to make those personal cases, but you can't really fail these first five short answer responses unless you just don't follow the directions and or if you have bad grammar or syntax. Otherwise, just make sure you have put a period at the end, you're capitalizing the right things, you're lowercasing the right things. Again, don't just start with a capitalized letter because it's it, it, it's the first word in it that you're writing. Only start with a capitalized letter if it's a proper noun. It requires capitalization because remember, you're starting the sentence mid-sentence um, and you're finishing a sentence that University of Maryland's admissions office have already started. So again, if I could travel anywhere, I would go to dot, 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 finish the sentence and 650 characters or fewer. The next one is the most interesting fact I ever learned from research was dot, dot, dot. A lot of kids will go onto Google and just find some random facts. Again, try to relate it to something you're actually interested in and you've actually researched on your own because that would be more indicative of your authentic self. Uh, but if you're really at a loss, I guess you could do that. But again, the big thing is here, the only way you will fail is if you pick something too common and or uh, you have bad syntax or grammar and you don't really finish a sentence, but rather start your own or maybe have multiple sentences. Uh, don't do that. Um, again, this is not very complicated. Don't overcomplicate it, but read the darn directions. In addition to my major, my academic interest include dot, dot, dot is the third prompt. Again, this is an opportunity to show a little bit different side of yourself or sides of yourself. What other areas of interest do you have uh, that sort of are intellectual or academically uh, related? This, you know, could be a minor area. This could be just something else that, you know, there are courses available on and you'd like to take in college. Again, this is your academic interest. This is not just your interest in music or your interest in, um, you know, sports. This is actually academic interest. So read the, the prompt carefully and finish the sentence and make sure, again, you have a period at the end of your sentence. My favorite thing about last Thursday was dot, dot, dot. Again, um, they, they're not going to fact check on what you really did last Thursday. If you can truly be authentic and honest, do it. But otherwise, if there's some random things that have happened to you in the last few weeks that were really awesome or you have a favorite moment from the past month, you could potentially argue it happened last Thursday and just write about it there. Just again, make sure that your grammar is correct, correct your spelling is correct, your, your syntax is correct, everything is correct as you finish this sentence. Uh, and then something you might not know about me is... Dot, dot, dot. And again, this is an opportunity for you then to learn something about you. Um, I would not keep it purely based off of identity. So for instance, like if you want to introduce the fact that uh, you are, you know, half Iranian and half uh, South African, and it wasn't clear beforehand on the application, uh, though I don't know why it wouldn't be because you have the demographic section, but maybe you chose to keep that blank. Um, you can say that, of course, but then you should try to elaborate on why this matters. Um, you know, similarly, you know, maybe you really like uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream. Uh, you can say that, but then explain why that part of your identity should matter to them. Uh, is it because you really like sweet things? You like the color green? I don't know. Why do you like mint chocolate chip? It doesn't have some other uh, meaning to you. Maybe your mom really liked it and she passed away. And so you like to eat it in her absence. Um, any number of reasons could apply to you, of course, but don't just end with, 
a very short response. That's another big mistake you could theoretically make with all five of these, which is even though you have 650 characters, you only use 100 of them. That would be a mistake. Why not use as much of the op opportunity as av is available to you as possible to write sort of a long sentence? So don't just say something you might not know about me is I like the color purple, period. I mean, just ending like that, that's sort of like a cliffhanger. Try to explain why you like the color purple and why that should matter to the people who are considering you for admission at University of Maryland College Park. And then finally, there is a new question this year, a new, um, it's not really even a sentence you need to complete. Now you actually have the opportunity to write 650 words from scratch, meaning you can start your own sentence. Uh, in response to this uh, new prompt, because we know, and of course I always tell students don't start a sentence with because, but University of Maryland College Park does just that. Because we know that diversity benefits the educational experience of all students. The University of Maryland values diversity in all of its many forms. This includes, but is not limited to, racial, socioeconomic, gender, geographical, and sexual orientation. We are interested in hearing about your own individual life experiences. In a few sentences, will you please describe how you have learned, grown, been inspired, or developed skills through one or more components of diversity. You, again, only have 650 words with which to respond to this short answer prompt for University of Maryland College Park. My argument would be you need to show yourself learning about um, either someone with a relatively unique background and how you benefited from hearing that person's perspective or meeting that person or becoming friends with that person and what and sort of what that taught you again you only have 650 words you can't write really write a book here but that's basically you know 75 to 100 words I'm sorry 650 characters so you only have about 75 to 100 words or you can just come out loud and proud as someone who is Hispanic and talk about your interaction with people who are not Hispanic and how that interaction has caused you to learn more about others who are not Hispanic, but also allowed you to maybe educate those with whom you interact about what it means to you to be Hispanic. And therefore, there's been sort of this uh, uh, symbiosis happening where you benefit from it and those who are not Hispanic benefit from it. Uh, so that is how I would approach it. You need to not just come out and say, I am black, I am Hispanic, and, and think that's enough. You need to be able to say and show a particular story in these 650 characters of you being one thing, someone else or other people being another thing, and what you gained uh, or what they gained, or ideally both gained from the experience of sort of mixing it up and interacting. It doesn't have to be a conflict by any means. It could be a very positive experience from start to finish, but you need to be able to show that uh, you benefited from diversity and or others benefited from diversity uh, and you're mature enough to reflect upon that and communicate that articulately in 650 words for University of Maryland College Park in this final response. This is not an essay. Um, yes, you have 100 words or so, but, you know, 650 characters, but I would still try to write a couple of sentences and structure it as if it was an absolute minuscule essay in the sense that uh, you have a one-sentence intro where you describe sort of the component of diversity that you're going to be centering your 650-character response around. So let's say, again, that you're Hispanic. You, know, you mentioned that in the first sentence, uh, and then you allude to the fact that you know, being Hispanic in a predominantly white high school has been a real eye opener. Or maybe you say, I had only, I, I'm Hispanic, but I only interacted with other Hispanic students up until this extracurricular activity in 11th grade when I interacted with uh, white students or with uh, black students or with Native American students. And at that point, you know, some, something happened and then you're going to write about that for the rest of the, the short very short response. It's not an essay. It's a 650 words, multiple sentences, basically. The next sentence is where you show that interaction happening uh, between you, let's say, and a white person or white people or you and, and um, Native American people or American Indians. And then you close with a concluding sentence of what you got out of that experience. So you basically have three sentences here, probably, since you have 650 characters. At most, you probably have three sentences. So um, 
I wish you the very best of luck um, because this is not a lot of words. But again, you're trying to show growth. You're trying to show a light bulb moment. You're trying to show that you and or someone else or others have benefited from the interaction of two different types of people mixing. Okay. Beyond that, I do want to just close with a very important fact about University of Maryland College Park for you to keep in mind when you're applying. There are things called limited enrollment programs at University of Maryland College Park. So if you are applying to a limited enrollment program major, you will be prompted to provide a second choice major. If you are not applying to a limited enrollment program, you will not be prompted to provide a second choice major. So think long and hard about who you authentically are today and who you authentically want to be in the future. And I would put your first choice major as truly your first choice major. However, in the event you are deciding between one of the LEPs, the limited enrollment programs versus a non-LEP program, I'd probably put the LAP first because you always have the opportunity to be considered for your second choice as well. Second, otherwise, if you put the non-LAP first, then you're not going to get a second choice. So you might as well get a two-for-one sale, right, for University of Maryland College Park and get to put two majors. If there's any doubt about what you want to major in and if one of those programs is an LAP, put the LAP as your first choice and then you'll be given the opportunity to put a second choice major as a second choice. Whereas if you put only a non-LAP program as your first choice major, that's it for you. And that is the major that you'll be applying with for University of Maryland College Park. My name is Craig Meister. I hope you enjoy this video. If you would like to learn more about me and how I can support you through the entire college application process, go to my website, collegemeister.com. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and please tell your family and friends about it because even though you may not be done with the college application process because you have been edified by today's video, Others may benefit from this video in the future or my back catalog of videos, which again, you can find at youtube.com slash college meister. Until next time, stay safe and stay well. And by goodness gracious, I wish you the very best of luck getting into your dream school, maybe. Maybe it's your dream school, University of Maryland College Park. Go Terps.